The color of red has a psychological effect of stopping. Traffic lights, stop signs, red warning letters, and so forth. Well, it turns out that red light can have the potential to stop pain and inflammation. Now, what exactly is red light? I'm not talking about putting a red filter on a flashlight and producing a red glow. No, red light is one of the component lights of white light. If you were to take white light and shine it through a crystal prism, it would split into its component colors. Those component colors are from left to right, violet, blue, green, orange, yellow, and on the right side, red. Now science is finding that the red wavelengths have potentially therapeutic benefits. Photobiomodulation is a property where light strikes living biological tissue and triggers a physiological response. Now you've heard of this phenomenon before, way back in the third grade. The form that you learned about is called photosynthesis. As you recall, in photosynthesis, sunlight strikes the leaf of a plant where it gets absorbed by structures called chloroplasts. The chloroplasts contain chlorophyll, which is the substance that makes plants look green. Well, that triggers a cascade of events that essentially allow the plant to convert carbon dioxide in the air and the water into sugar, which is why plants are the source of carbohydrates, carbs. The leading theory on how red light produces photobiomodulation is via increasing cellular energy. In a typical cell, you have a membrane, a nucleus, little structures called mitochondria, cytoplasm, and various other supporting structures that enable the cell to respirate and perform all its functions. Now this requires energy. Energy production happens in the structures that are called mitochondria. When red light strikes a cell, it gets absorbed by molecules called cytochrome C oxidase. When cytochrome C oxidase absorbs red light, it increases the rate of ATP production. Now ATP is basically the fuel molecule of all cells. The energy stored in its bonds is what the cell uses to do things such as proliferate, regenerate, synthesize proteins, remove waste, increase its metabolic rate, and so forth. The other theory is that as the cytochrome C oxidase absorbs the red light, it increases the ATP production, but that in turn produces more reactive oxygen species, or ROS, that serves to change the oxidative state of the cell, which basically means it changes its electrical charge. When the oxidative state of a cell is changed, it basically upregulates genes that are associated with beneficial effects, such as proliferation, uh, increasing membrane potential, synthesizing proteins, and metabolic activity. All of these reactions are beneficial to wound healing and reducing inflammation. So how can you use red light therapy to reduce pain or enhancing the repair rate of an injury, a sprained ankle, a sore knee, arthritis in your knuckles. The good news is that there are instruments that can generate therapeutic red light that are available for direct sale to the consumer. The one that I personally use in my clinic is called the Tend Light. It's a, a nice device. It looks like a small flashlight. You could use infrared saunas. There are portable infrared saunas that generate infrared light and heat. There are also infrared mats, mats that you lay down on the floor that have many embedded diodes that generate the infrared light. You light down on it for a couple of minutes, both sides, let that infrared light uh, penetrate your skin, your muscles, and you'll experience a therapeutic effect that way. The third way is through cold lasers. These lasers are designed to heal soft tissue injuries via therapeutic red light. In summary, science shows that red light has therapeutic benefits.